here we have the PSA Jackal. There have been a lot of questions. Is the PSA Jackal actually a good gun? Is the PSA Jackal good enough to defeat the Scar? Is the PSA Jackal worth it? Do I love the PSA Jackal? All of these questions and more will be answered today on Grantham as we have been testing the literal hell out of this thing. So, as usual, stay tuned for unbiased Grantham reviews. Let's get into it. But before we get into it, what do we have to talk about, Micah? Sponsors. The biggest sponsor of the channel is the Sonoran Desert Institute. If you're looking to get your start in gunsmithing, go and check them out. We do love them quite a bit, don't we, Micah? Uh, they're my fave. They fund all of this and they are absolutely awesome. And of course, who could we not forget, Micah? Primary arms, and uh, everybody's been sending me pictures of the Skittle sticker. They're you know, very happy with it. Yeah, no, they're actually not because uh, we actually have a meeting with them on Thursday. I'm actually pretty worried. But if you're looking for great optics at a great price, we can't recommend them enough. We do love their optics. The short one day is literally goaded in the sauce. It's one of our favorite optics. We just love it. And if you're looking to get better at shooting, what do you need to do, Micah? Dry fire. Dry fire. Mantis. It's going to turn your weapon into a dry fire machine and you'll get much better. I spend a lot of my time dry firing at the TV. Rest in peace, Jack Reacher. In any case, all the ammo today is sponsored by AEC. We're shooting 77 grain OTM, which we absolutely love. With all that being said, Talk is Cheap Ammunition is sponsored by who, Micah? AAC. All right, let's get into it. Now, before we get started with drills, the question is, what exactly is the Jackal? So a couple things here. One, we do have to note that AAC, who is our ammo sponsor, is a uh, subsidiary of PSA. So with those things being said, um, I would rather call this video an overview because of that financial investment in terms of ammo to us from PSA. Now, despite all of that, we're gonna be as brutal and as honest as we always are when it comes to a firearm. It's just because of that sponsorship that I don't feel comfortable calling it a review. And that's just for our own essay. Now, the PSA Jackal is a 5.56 semi-automatic rifle. It is a long stroke gas piston. So it, it it's kind of like an AKM or AK-47 gas system with like a scar bolt. That's what it most reminds me of. It's a interesting system. It's It differs in some ways from the AR-180, but it's in many ways, it's very similar. So what's to be said about that is a lot of these rifles that use an AR-18, AR-180 system that are modernized like this cost a lot of money. But how much does this one right here cost, Micah? Well, like 1300 bucks? Yeah, so for like the setup that we have right here with the nice stock and everything, we got about 30, obviously, with all the accessories more, but uh, the base rifle about 1300, you can get them for about a thousand. So that's a fairly cheap, long stroke, modernized gas piston rifle. So there's a lot to be said about this design. Is it good? Does it actually work? We're gonna get into it. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run drills with it. Let's see what this rifle is actually capable of. Okay, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna start off with drills right here using 77 grain. We have Mika Meefield. So my name is Mike Jones. I am a retired uh, Air Force Special Warfare guy. Um, shoot a lot, actually much better shooter just because shoot civilian side. Micah, what's your background? Camera guy, gun enthusiast. Out shoots me. Yeah. You feel, no. It's Counter-Strike, no. dude. It's Counter-Strike. <laughs> Only with shitty the guns. mouse click reps. But with all that being said, Mike, I always start these drills off, so you're going to start this time. All right. First drill. What are we doing? First drill, whatever you want. Is it lame to say just we start off with a build drill? Let's absolutely do it. I need to go grab my shot timer. Where's your snow camo? I forgot it. I got these stupid gloves on, though. Shooter, do you have the course fire? I do. Stand by. Ah. Uh, One, four, eight. That was good, dude. I'm going to blame it on the gloves. Those are big. <laughs> They're thick gloves. Are you, are you cold? Yes, I'm freezing. It's not that bad. <laughs> One, four, eight, all in? Yeah, yeah, all in. Yeah, it's good. All right, we got to go again because I didn't hold the shot timer in the right spot. Ready? Yeah. One, two, six. Woo! You beat me. That PSA trigger is pretty good. Yeah, so one thing that we should note here, if you want to come in here, the trigger that we have right here is one of the newer triggers from the Saber line from PSA. And it's pretty dummy light. We've got... 3,000 rounds on it at this point. It's feeling, it's lighter than a Geisley. I don't know if I consider it a combat trigger, 
but it has a little less take up than a Geisley and it's a little lighter. So I would even say it's faster, but, but I don't know. I wouldn't, it's not like a combat trigger. I, I trust the Geisley more, but from our testing, it's doing pretty good so far. <laughs> it feels good. It feels really good. All right, you pick the next drill. Sure. So one thing that's interesting um, about the uh, Jackal is that because you have a long stroke gas piston system, it is more mass traveling, so you do have a little bit more jump than an AR-15. It feels a little luggy. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Little, yeah. Kind of like a scar in yeah, some ways. Yeah. So let's go ahead and let's do uh, Mozambique. Okay. You gonna try and ride that recoil up? I'm gonna try. Mozambique is two to the chest, one to the head. Um, you never know when a, a you know, two to the chest face gets the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not heard that? No. Get ready. Yeah. Stand by. Whoa. 0.92. <laughs> Low though. It doesn't even work. Didn't kick hard enough. <laughs> I didn't kick hard enough. Give me one more. Yeah. Give me one more. Okay. Shoot ready. Yeah. Stand by. It's, it's, it's better. It's yeah. good. It was good. 109. All right. I'll take it. Here you are. We're going to add, we're going to subtract like two tenths of a second from my gloves. That sounds good. What about right? my kit? Let the audience decide. <laughs> Shoot, are you ready? It's also cold as balls. Yeah. Stand by. Shoot ready, stand <laughs> Stand by. Nice, dude, 102. Woo! Mm -hmm. Good, yeah, that was good right there. Awesome, man. All right, next drill is you. You know what we should do? Sure. Clear the plate rack. Oh, God. If I clear the plate rack, I could take the pronouns out of my bio. Deal. <laughs> All right, shoot ready. Yeah, for safety off. Safety off, on, ready to go. Shoot ready. Yeah, stand by. Dang. 187. You really went for that that slow and controlled to make sure that you just uh if I, I did, if I, I miss once I, I think you're gonna try to gas it, you're gonna lose. <laughs> if I miss once, I just lose. Uh maybe like three millimeters above the top. Okay. Like about a quarter of a plate. Shooter, are you ready? Yep. Stand by. Two four four. I just can't ever win the plate It's like the pronouns the stay rack. in the bio. <laughs> All, right, All right, next up, we're gonna do some long shots. All right. A lot of questions about PSA, Jackal, and accuracy. So we'll start, we'll keep walking it out. So right here, we're at uh, about 150. So let's go and check it out. All right, pretty easy. Let's go ahead and take it to uh, 600. 150 <laughs> straight to 600. <laughs> Okay, maybe we should try like 300. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> Why not? Three hundred, definitely dual. Yeah, obviously. Have a ten-five barrel right here, so we do have a good amount of drop. So we'll adjust for it at six hundred. This is where I need that Tacom HQ. Yeah. See what edge it impacted on? Uh, it was pretty much center, maybe right, just a little bit. Nice. Yeah, you're pretty much center. Feels pretty good. So we've done a little bit of a uh, long range shooting here with the uh, Jackal. Um, we're at 600. Uh, wind's pretty bad today. We're gusting between 20, uh, 10 to 30. It's just the nature of the uh, Ram Ranch out here. But um, shooting 77 grain, so. There's a lot of time for that uh, round to be affected in flight. Despite that, we're getting pretty consistent hits at 600, which is uh, a lot out of a little 10-3. The rifle is definitely combat accurate at the distances I need. So pretty impressed with the accuracy we're getting out of the Jackal. Um, back to the review. Now, this video is brought to you by Aura. Now, in November, Duke University released a study. In it, what they did is they identified a couple hundred US-based data brokers that were offering the sale of military and veterans data. So what they did is they set up an Asia domain in Asia.Asia .asia email, and they contacted these US-based data brokers in order to buy US service members and their veterans information, and they all agreed. Now, these US-based data brokers sold the name, the email, the home address, the marital status, tons of different information. They also offered up financial information, geolocation data, a lot of sensitive 
information. Why this is important is that geolocation data not just doesn't have your home, it has your acquaintances' homes, it has where you train, where you go to the gym. This is very sensitive personal data. Service members, family members, of service members, acquaintances, they're all at risk. Now we are under attack. Now Aura is an all-in-one digital safety tool. Now all they're gonna do is they can find these US-based data brokers and they can submit opt-out for you. Now these opt-outs are very difficult to get to, let Aura take care of it, and that way they can get rid of your information from those US data brokers. Now Aura is a US-based company with 100% US-based customer service available 24-7. Now, Aura also does a lot more to protect you and your family. They offer credit identity theft monitoring, VPN, password management, and much more. The point is, you get all this at a great price, over one million in identity theft insurance for each family member, up to five adult members. So go and check it out, aura.com forward slash grand thumb. First 14 days are free. We definitely recommend it. Go and check them out. Back to the video. Well, we've done a lot of shooting at this point, so it's time to do um, our favorite part, which is going to be the uh, talking portion. So for all my Marines out there, we're gonna do what you love. We're gonna go tip to butt on this gun. We've talked about it previously, but we'll reiterate, the PSA Jackal is a $1,000 to $1,300 gun, depending on your setup. It is 5.56 semi-automatic. It is a long stroke gas piston uh, operated weapon. And there's a lot of interesting stuff about it. There's um, definitely some drawbacks. There's a lot of questions like, should I get the Jackal instead of an AR-15? And my answer there is gonna be no. Uh, I'm gonna explain that. The AR-15 at this point um, is so well understood. The parts are so well specced out. There are so many companies making great parts at great prices. You can get a fairly cheap, but really, really good AR-15 for about $1,000, where you're pretty much combat grade. Now, that question about should I buy XYZ in 7 AR-15 goes to many different guns. It goes to the Bren 2, the Scar-L, the CZ-805, the CZ Bren 2. There are tons of different firearms that offer a flavor that is different from the AR-15. And almost universally, we're going to say on this channel, buy yourself an AR-15. It's going to be cheaper. Uh, they just have it dialed in. But like I said, if you're a special snowflake or you just want to have something different, um, you want to get less cancer from all the gas blowback from a suppressor, a gas piston weapon or some type of uh, unique design might be for you. So starting tip to butt, what we have right here on the end, I'm sure we're going to get questions. We do have a Huxworks can. Um, this was sent to us, of course, by them for T&E. And, &E, and um, it's a flow through can. And because of that, it's going to not have as much back pressure compared to many of the cans out there and it performs pretty well we've been very happy with the performance of the huxworks scan um, and on the jackal was an absolute dream to use now when it comes to the muzzle device um <laughs> there are a million different options to go into the psa website uh the one that we got came with an a2 which is what i typically like also it keeps costs down because i like to put whatever i want on if you want to get an upper with your muzzle device of choice whether it be dead air surefire whatever those are definitely options so no issues there. Moving back to the barrel. So the barrel on this guy right here is a 10.5. There are many different options when it comes to the PSA Jackal as a very versatile design. Um, I wanted to get the shorter boy. I wanted to have something for kind of an urban combat setup. And like we said in our video, like we demonstrated, it is accurate out to the ranges that we need. Anywhere from three to 400, it's quite easy out to 600. Doable, but that's more of a um, constraint of 5.56 than it is a constraint of the Jackal. Uh, many people have tested these um, with really good ammo. You're getting close to about 1.5 and maybe a little bit lower. That's plenty from a gas piston gun. An AR-15 is going to be more accurate, but there are less moving parts. I can accept that trade-off for a long stroke gas piston system. Um, now, there is a difference when it comes to the gas system on the Jackal between the longer variants and the shorter variants. So the shorter variants actually do have a smaller gas piston compared to the longer variants. In addition, there's more adjustment range on the larger variants than the smaller variants. This hasn't really been an issue on the 10.5. Um, of course, with the Huxworks, we don't have a whole lot of back pressure, but in the different cans that I tested on it, uh, there was never an issue finding the correct gas setting. Uh, Micah also has a 13.7, and on that one, there's so many gas settings, you can get that thing gassed perfectly. Um, as a quick note, we have found that when it comes to the gas setting, you can get this thing shooting really soft, but the return is a little bit slower. I found that the the combat kind of gas option where you, you're running it a little bit harder does tend to drive that gun 
on the target a little bit faster and it might see, seem counterintuitive because the the recoil might feel overall more violent however the return on the target is much faster and i found that was a better option also helped the gun run better overall any issues that we did run into when it came to uh, any type of jams or malfunctions were due to undergassing the rifle so that's a self-correcting uh, thing that you can do right there uh, the gun ran great the recoil is very interesting because of that long stroke gas piston system you do have more recoil compared to an ar-15 that is true of any piston design whether it be short stroke or long stroke <laughs> it's you have more more mass that's going to be reciprocating within the system compared to an AR-15. AR-15s are just beautiful in the way that they're extremely low recoil. However, as you guys know, they do get dirtier compared to the piston-driven weapons. Now, moving back from the gas system, um, I do find it to be a very reliable system. The one kind of caveat to that is that we, we only have a sample size of two uh, of, the, of the two weapons that we've, we've been shooting. So it, it's hard to say if this is truly a combat rated weapon my gut instinct tells me that this definitely needs more vetting and that's something that we can't do in the short amount of time that we have on the weapon or even in the thousands upon thousands of rounds that we put on the weapon so far moving to the handguard we do have m lock on the three o'clock six o'clock and nine o'clock and then of course we have picatinny at the very top now that picatinny on the top is continuous and that is rigid enough to retain zero on your laser aiming devices so right here at the front we do have an end golf um, I haven't noticed any loss or, or change in zero on this guy. And then, of course, that comes all the way back to our optics right here. But before we move all the way back there, um, for our particular setup, we do have a um, Arasaka light that has the mod light conversion head. And then we just have that <laughs> zip tied on the side with the pressure pad. I find that that works. Now, as far as why I have my charging handle on the right-handed side, on this really short variant, the kind of the area where I want to grab, especially when I have a laser aiming module up front, is right where that charging handle would stick out. So for me, um, I like to have that on the right hand side. That way I can grip where I want to. Um, otherwise, it just gets in the way of my hand and it's kind of a pain in the ass. I understand one happened on the left side. It's probably a better option. It should also be noted that there is a newer charging handle out there now. Uh, we've been evaluating this weapon for quite a while, so we have the older variant. Moving from there, um, on the inside where the charging handle is right here you do have a sled that kind of guides everything there was an update that was made to this early variants had some problems um, i have the updated one in this particular gun and it's been uh, no problem whatsoever so it seems that they uh, corrected whatever issue is causing those to crack moving back from there we do have um, our optic right here so we are running a sig romeo 8t um, we do like them they do run pretty well Going down to the lower, I do want to talk about that. So the nice thing about the Jackal is if you already have a lower, like an AR-15 lower, it, it's just a couple conversion pieces to get it working on your Jackal. And that is very nice. Um, the best part about it is any of your AR-15 triggers are going to work with your Jackal. So I was going to throw a Geisley SSAE, which is my typical go-to, but we decided to try the new Sabre line of triggers, which is from PSA. Um, it's been running like an absolute dream. Um, extremely light, extremely crisp take up. Uh, in fact, probably the best way to show that is to actually shoot it. So, maybe I can charge that weapon. So, go ahead and put your finger right over mine. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go set trigger here. So, taking up about a millimeter of take up. It is a two stage trigger, so that's normal. Give her a wall. Give her a wall. Maybe a three pound trigger right there. Reset. Maybe about a two millimeters. And from that let off maybe three pounds maybe it is a quick trigger guys it is a very quick trigger um faster than the gun due to the fact that uh we kind of have it gas down on the piston system right here great trigger um you have your st standard ar-15 magwell when it comes to the jackal again your ar-15 lowers will work no complaints when it comes to that and um the grip that it came with on this particular one those magpul i have no complaints i do like the magpul grips quite a bit and that can be changed to whatever you want now, being a piston-driven design, uh, you do have a folding sock, which is very cool. So there are a lot of options when it comes to the Jackal. There are a ton of different conversions, whether it be from 1913 to this ACR stock that we have right here. I am a huge slut for the ACR stock, so I absolutely had to have it. Um, there are a few issues that um, both me and other shooters have encountered with this. 
So the cheek piece right here is not something that I typically mess with, but it can be popped up and then rotated into place. Um, I find that, that it's really easy to, as you kind of get into the gun, for that to push down. It's not something that I use so much, but certainly not as good as the original. Uh, when it comes to adjustment, there's two buttons on either side right here. You press those in and you can adjust your length of pull right there. That works fine, I have no issues there. The stock overall works really well for me. There are a couple quirks. It is pretty solid overall. I do like it. Um, I think that they did a pretty good job with it. Again, because I don't use that cheek piece, it's not something that bothers me so much. Now, when we talk about a rifle in Grand Thumb, the big thing is going to be the shootability. So when it comes to this gun, um, it is very soft. Um, it functions very well with a suppressor. It is an absolute dream. Piston guns tend to run suppressors very well. So I've been very pleased with the performance. Um, the accuracy is um, very much so what I would need out of a rifle. But um, I definitely have some concerns when it comes to the Jackal. Um, I do have the concerning areas of wear at the front. The bolt and the piston system have been rock solid otherwise. But it's hard to recommend this for serious use when there are so many good options at around the same price, primarily when it comes to AR-15s that are very well built. I feel, I feel very distinctly responsible when I recommend a weapon for to protect your life. So you have to understand that for me to recommend a weapon, um, just hands down, bet your life on it, there has to be a lot of vetting when it comes to that. And it has to be more than just me. I can't, I'm not able to do a review and say bet your life on it. There's a lot that has to come into play there. So I will say that this is definitely on that road to where I will suggest that in the future. It's just with an early variant of a weapon system, no matter how mature the Jackal is beginning to get, I, there's always a hesitation there just because I do feel that responsibility. I'm overly cautious. Micah will agree with me. I'm an overly cautious guy when it comes to my reviews. So the best way to end it would be I'm overly cautious, but extremely optimistic about this rifle. It's good. It's very good. And I think what's scary about it is that it's putting much larger competitors to shame. So for example, when we have a weapon like the Scar L, the Scar L with a 10.5 or a 10.3 barrel with a suppressor will begin to warp the screws at the back of the receiver. You don't see that, those odd wear patterns with a much cheaper rifle that we have here at the PSA Jackal. So when it comes between the Scar L and the PSA Jackal, I probably would tend to recommend the PSA Jackal. And that is pretty amazing. You really do have to give it to them for that. So if you don't want an AR-15, do get a Jackal. But if this is your first rifle, get an AR-15. So as always, guys, this is an overview since there is a sponsorship there. I like this rifle quite it a bit. It looks sick. It looks sick. It's fucking cool. I know I'm overly harsh when it comes to these uh, types of designs, but this is a rifle I'll continue to shoot because I like it quite a bit. I think it's sick as fuck. It looks cool as fuck. It's like the ACR just like was reborn, but not made shitty, you know? Cause like after that, would you take this over an ACR? Oh, yeah, there's actually a support for this. Like Bushmaster really fucked that up, but I hear they're remaking that. So we'll see, but I would take this over the ACR. I'd take it over the scar. So I guess it is pretty fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, get out there and get training. If you got the PSA Jackal, you're absolutely going to rock with it. So get out there, train, be good guys. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for tuning in. Tons more cool things coming. And as always, Dad advice from Micah Mayfield. Dad advice? Yeah. Oh, dad advice would be, uh, you, when it comes to finances, I'm not gonna say something as nuanced as, hey, don't go into debt. What I am gonna say is, don't buy a car and pay $1,000 a month on it, a high interest rate loan. Okay, be it's wise, do your smart. research. Yeah. Buy something meaningful, spend your money and set yourself up for the future. Agreed. Hey, Micah, before you cut it, can you show them what I'm looking at this entire time? Because yeah. it's, it's really, it's actually quite beautiful. It's probably hard to focus. Yeah, it's actually really, really pretty. It's like these dark clouds.